My name is Paavo Niskala. I'm leading the advanced engineering team at Taktotec, and my team's responsibility is to validate components, materials, and new technologies for IMSC use. And uh, like Sini said, I consider myself as an IMSC veteran. When I joined the company in the year 2012, we were five guys. We had the ideas of our founders and we had a small lab, basically a one room. Now, after six years, we are an international company. We have nearly 100 people working for us and we have an injection on IMSC production line here in Oulu. And oh boy, have we learned. And uh, I will share a bit of that IMSC wisdom for you today. I will walk you through briefly how we validate components and conductive inks for IMSC use. And like Sini said, IMSE is built from building blocks. Touch, sense, illumination, connect different kind of surface materials. And what enables these building blocks are materials and components. They are the base for IMSE. And I will explain it through a sports analogy. So how does a young fighter go into the money rings? First, he needs to learn the boxing fundamentals. What's the stance? How to protect himself? How to move? How to hit the jab? Backhand, hooks, and so on. So when he has learned the boxing fundamentals, after hundreds of hours at the gym, hitting the back, shadow boxing, jumping the rope, he has learned the boxing fundamentals. But that punching back ain't going to hit him back. So he needs to continue to the next phase, which is the sparring. Sparring is a simulated fight done in a safe environment. You're training with your friends, you're wearing good protection gear, and the sparring session is typically divided into smaller sections. Like your job is only to attack, or your job is only to defend. And after thousands of sparring hours, you are ready to go to the fight. And the purpose of sparring is to learn how to utilize boxing fundamentals in a fight. And if you have done your training properly, you can utilize the boxing fundamentals in a creative winning way in the ring. So what does this have to do with IMSE? I consider materials and components as our boxing fundamentals. And when we combine them into material stacks in our production, that's our sparring. And when we are confident with our material stacks, we continue to IMSC projects where we build the material stacks onto a shapes what our customers want. And this training camp, we call it internally T process. It's an industrialization process for materials and components. And it consists of three stages. First is the technical concept. On a second phase, we concentrate on the manufacturability and reliability. And on the third phase, our focus is on the production repeatability. And when we are confident with the material stacks, we go to fight with our dear customers. So, like said, material stack is essential for IMSC. As you can see from the cross-section picture here, we first built the functional B-film. We print con uh, graphic inks on it. We print conductive inks on it. We mount components on it using conductive adhesives. On top, we have the graphic film, ty typically, uh, typically with hard codes also containing graphic films. And after thermoforming, we combine these films together using injection molding and typically transparent plastics. So as you can see, there are a lot of material interfaces within an IMSC part, and they all need to work together. For example, the conductive traces after thermoforming, they must meet the 
resistance designed by our electronic designer. The light output out of the LED through the resin, through the graphic, must meet the design intent of our illumination specialist. And each of the material layers need to have a good adhesion to each other. Processing compatibility. For example, when we are using polycarbonate as a substrate and we are mounting components on it, we cannot go in curing temperatures much higher than 130 Celsius. So the conductive adhesives need to comply with that. We do not want that any solvent residues is trapped inside the plastic. And also all of the materials need to be available globally and they need to be available with good price. And that's why we only work with world leading companies like with you who are here today. So component here, we are using traditional electronic components in IMSE. Majority of the components we mount on a film are LEDs, light emitting diodes. But due to the restrictions in the processing temperatures of the plastic substrates, we cannot use traditional solders. We are using conductive adhesives. And conductive adhesives typically do not self-align. So we prefer that kind of component packages where the terminal pitch is wide enough so that the, we minimize the possible short circuiting of conductive adhesives. Also, the conductive adhesives do not side wet the component terminals, so we prefer that kind of components where the majority of the interconnection areas are underneath the component. Also, as we are putting the components through IMSC process, they need to withstand the high heats and pressures of thermoforming and injection mode. And our validation process is as follows. On the first phase, we evaluate the technical concept of the package using our years of expertise and lessons learned. We see that what kind of materials the component contains, how is the terminal design, and what's the moisture sensitivity level for the component. If we see that component package is IMSC feasible, we will continue to the second phase. And here we are using a platform especially designed for this purpose. We will put 200 pieces through IMSC process and after the production run, we will evaluate how does the package work on a flat areas, how does it work on a 3D areas. We will measure the light output from the components and we will continue to environmental testing. First, we will run four days of thermal shock from minus 40 to 85 Celsius with 10 seconds of transition times component not powered on. Then we will continue to so-called damp heat test, which is, 80, which is 85 Celsius, 85 relative humidity, and now components are powered on. And after eight days of environmental testing, we will evaluate the illumination performance of the components, and we will study the physical characteristics of the components. Things we, where we concentrate are, for example, has the component body material melted in the injection molding? How has the injection molding resin adhered to the component body and to the lens material? And if we see that, hey, component is okay, we continue to the third phase, which is the certification run. Again, using the same platform, we run 10,000 pieces of components through the IMSC process and now we concentrate on the yield based on the learnings what we learned in T2. If we are meeting our yield targets, we continue to the same environmental testings as we did in T2, but now we do them in par parallel and we run them for 42 days. And after this extensive testing, we again evaluate the illumination as well as the physical characteristics of the component. 
if and when everything is okay, component package is T3 certified, can be used in our customer projects. If we have any failures in the process, that's a good information for us as well, and all that data is collected to IMSC certification database. Another integral part of our material stack is conductive inks. And we want to make sure that our conductive inks work with our reference materials as with our reference process. And we are using a platform called Universal Test Layout. Guys will put those in. And later Janne will tell more about this. But in the first phase we concentrate on the printability. And that first phase gives us a nice ranking in terms of resistance within all the inks we test. Then we continue to the second phase where we bring in the 3D component and here we also evaluate how does the conductive ink work with our reference dielectrics and with our reference conductive adhesives. Majority of the inks stay here. But the ones we are happy with in terms of elongation, in terms of conductivity, in terms of process compatibility, will continue on the T3 phase. Here we will build full material stacks, and here we are concentrating on the variation of the resistance in the pro production. And after the production, we will also run damp heat tests for the parts in order to see that there's no surprises in the adhesion. If and when conductive ink passes the T3 phase, it is T3 certified, can be used in our customer projects. Like said, material stack essential for us, and we are validating components, conductive inks, and other materials as well on a weekly basis, on a repeatable way. If and when they are T3 approved, they can be used in our customer projects. And I'm here to win. How about you? Thank you.